Welcome back to Top Line Blue Jays. We got a two man show going here, unless uh, our good friend Mikey and his car uh, was in the shop. Make it over this afternoon. Uh oh. Uh oh, yeah. That's a bit of a pain in the ass. But hey, we're in person. It's an another new vibe. Let's see what the, if it's a, a different feeling for old Zaz over there uh, behind the mic and behind the camera. As usual, I'm one of your co-hosts, Nick Lanham, here with my boy, Zaz Alexi. How you doing, Zaz? You know, I'm good. I'm good. The Jays are kind of on a heater here, so not much more you can really say. No, not much at all. And, uh, but let's let's talk about, we got a few series to get through here. Uh, let's go back to that Pittsburgh series. One we were all pretty optimistic would be a sweep going in. I'd conservatively took the two one so I could uh, not be be a little different, and the Jays went in there and uh, kicked some ass to say the least. Uh, three game sweep in Pittsburgh. What was your big takeaways from that Pittsburgh series? Dots were going. Everyone was going. I don't know. It was just one of those vibes that going into it. I thought Pittsburgh kind of had an easy schedule, so it was one of those things where you take advantage of. Pirates. <laughs> I don't know. That's not, not really much more to say. What do you think, Nick? Yeah, it's uh, funny. Going into that series, we were talking about the Pirates being a first-place team in their division and it being really, really interesting and that they'd be, they'd be bound to fall off. And it seems like the Jays were the start of that fall off. The AL East has rolled through there and uh, really brought them back down, to uh, back down a peg to where they probably should be looked at. That team did not look like a first place team at all in any facet. Jays were all over their pitching. Uh, how many base running errors was there from the Pittsburgh Pirates? Yeah, I, a few. I was listening to a scouting report going into that series. How I think it was on Sportsnet um, talking about the uh, Pirates have been one of the better ba base stealing, most aggressive teams in the league, and the Jays catching just hasn't been great at coming no. down runners yet this year. Uh, so we expected aggression, but it was just a lot of stupidity on a lot of decisions. They gave up a lot of outs on the base pass. And, yeah, the Jays' offense really came alive against some uh, suspect pitching, I'd say. Rich Hill's still in the league <laughs> from the left he's side like, there. <laughs> he's he's got to be older than that, even. Uh, which brought us into a two-gamer against the Philadelphia uh, Phillies. Uh, one I think we we mostly had as a split. Yeah, uh, Phillies are, you know, a good team. They should probably be in the conversation come October, I think. Uh, the top end of that roster is really nice, in my opinion. Oh, yeah, we're definitely better than the record. That's yeah, sure. and we, we saw, we, we dropped both. Aaron Nola beats Alec Manoa. Manoa only gets through four and two thirds. Manoa pitched well. Yeah, he did. Three in runs. Uh, w wasn't helped out much. And now one a couple errors, I believe, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And the Jays will lose that one 8-4 as the Phillies get to their bullpen afterwards. Yeah, it's a, it's a, they have a nice bullpen, too. A lot of good names, at least. Yeah, and then uh, and then that one, yeah. Trevor Richards got shelled for three. Uh, Nate Pearson let one in. Tim Aza got one in. And uh, Swanson was the only really, really, really able to shut the door. Who I think we're going to talk about a little bit. I got to give Eric Swanson probably the best reliever on this Toronto Blue Jays roster right now. I know, I know Romano's the closer and he's the guy. Another couple drop saves yeah, this week. Yeah. yeah, Eric Swanson, man, has been a gift. Uh, I'm, I'm really appreciating that trade. I feel like the Jays are a bad short, but Swanson's been invaluable to that open right now. Uh, we'll get into that, though. And then uh, a kind of reverse of that game the next night, 2-1 game, where the bullpen and Kevin Gosman threw gems. This one hurts. To lose a Kevin Gosman start like this, six innings, nine Ks, three hits scattered, zero especially, earned runs. Especially up when he left, too. Those, those are the games you need to win. Those are the games that uh, you really kick yourself in the ass. I mean, on the other side, Zach Wheeler threw a gem. Seven innings, seven Ks, one earned. Like you said, we left the starting matching, uh, pitching matchup up one. And uh, the bullpen, Yimmy Garcia throws a clean inning. Eric Swanson, again, throws a clean inning. Jordan and Jordan Romano, man, it's been a bit of a trend uh, this year. The velocity's been up and down, too, it seems like. And Jordan Romano at 94 is not the same as Jordan Romano at 98, 99. Um, wondering about that, because, yeah, Swanson, again, 
is unbelievable. Yimmy Garcia, man. He's been uh, interesting. There's a lot of feedback on him on social media. I'm a big Yimmy guy. Me too. Yeah. So, 2-1. Uh, Zach Wheeler, like I said, threw a gem. It, it's tough to win games when you only score one run. Tough to win games when uh, your closer doesn't close you out. It's and nice. you drop both against the Phillies. This team's... It was funny, actually. I was driving driving my dad today to the uh, to pick up his car. He's getting something fixed. And he goes, who the Jays got today? He's like, the Yankees for four. He's like, okay, the Yankees are going to sweep because every series now. The Jays don't play any middle ground. It's They're going to get swept or they're going to sweep somebody. I had somebody on Twitter reach out and say the same. He's like, you know, I like my teams a little more on the straight and narrow. It's been a bit of a roller coaster. And we saw that roller coaster kick back and go the positive way with the Braves coming into town to start a 10-game homestand. That is one thing to say about this. The Jays have done a lot of this on the road to start the year. Yeah, I believe they're the most, most team on the road this year. Yeah, yeah, so far they've played the most games on the road. Yeah. So you get the Braves coming into town on a, on a three game or a seven, ten game homestand, three games against the Braves. Yeah. Pitching duel Friday night. Yeah. Chris Bassett. Yeah. Nine innings, eight Ks, two walks, two hits. Two hits. Yeah. What a gem. What a gem of a start. A guy that we kind of were debating about the last few weeks. Our co-host who's not here. Not a big Bassett guy. Um, that was a great start. I uh, 103 pitches, too, to do that all on. And we were we were texting going into that game. We're like, oh, man, Spencer Strider versus Chris Bassett. Yes, we were. And Spencer Strider, absolutely filthy in that game. Was it 13 games? 12 games? 12 games over six and two-thirds. <laughs> one earned run, five hits, one walk. It's an absolute pitching duel Friday night. It almost goes as the reverse of what happened against the Phillies where you, you want to get that Gosman start. He throws six shutout innings at nine Ks. If you're Atlanta, you're feeling like, holy shit, we couldn't get much more out of our starter. <laughs> and Chris Bassett goes the distance, which is great to see. He gives the bullpen, which has probably been overworked a bit over the last stretch. I'm glad to see that uh, Schneider kept him in, too. Mm-hmm. I, I felt a little bit maybe the eighth, and he came out the ninth. I'm like, okay, he's going to start it. I really feel like the way this week worked with the, the day off in the middle and then Bassett going nine, it's really set them up for this Yankee series that we're going to get into. Yeah. Uh, Chris Bassett, nine innings, just probably the best performance you'll see of the year. He's actually, since that first start blow up, mm-hmm. he does it a funky way. He does it, doesn't does look the prettiest. Pretty, yeah. He's throwing under a two ERA since that first start. It takes a while for those pitching numbers once you get juiced up there yeah. to come down. But he's been nothing short of fantastic for the Jays right now. And uh, the bats, you know, George Springer brought in a run. We're we're starting to see a little bit out of him. There's there's definitely a lot more there from George Springer. A lot more smiles, too. Yeah, he he looks like he's enjoying the game again. And it kind of reminded me, actually, that you say that. Like last year, remember when he got in the funk last year? And he really talked about hating the game. And talking to a guy like Vlad made him love the game again. And then he broke out of it. I have a good feeling about where George Springer's going. Like I said, he's still pounding the ball at times. Um, we'll see where that is. Dalton Varsho kept his uh, his hot streak going with that big home run in the eighth. That felt like it kind of put the game away. Yeah, Two nothing game, you get that third run. And uh, Bo Bichette, you know, ground ball, but he brings the run in. Run in. I think he's continued. Like I saw a tweet this week. Let me, let's talk about this. There's a guy, Vern. Me and Vern. Are pretty much polar opposites across the board. With the Jets, with the Blue Jays, whatever. And I hadn't been on Twitter. I hadn't been scrolling my feed lately. And I go onto the feed, eh? And it was, uh, I think it was Friday night or the Saturday night of this Brave series. He goes on to say, oh, Bo Bichette, he's so selfish at the plate. What's he doing swinging at that? Pitcher's throwing nothing but balls. I'm getting sick and tired of him. This is the Jays' best player this year that's at this point. That's the most consistent hitter. We've seen Chapman kind of take that step back a little bit. Obviously, it was such a scorching pace early on. Uh, I think the pace he's on now is a bit more sustainable. And he, great, great hitter, great player still. But Bo has been carrying this load. Mm-hmm. Vladdy, it feels like, is on the urge of a breakout. Uh, I've loved the, the approach at the plate. I think the power is going to come. He's locked in at the plate. His eyes oh. are, he's looking at everything. Even that, again, I know we're a little bit ahead of ourselves here, but Sunday, that was outside all day. Yeah. 
And I did want to get there. Yeah. Uh, so we'll start with the Saturday quick. It was a 5-2 game. Eric Swanson with the win after one and two thirds coming in and relief. Just again, I can't say enough about the job he's done. Uh, Darius pitched that one. Made it five and two thirds. Two earned runs. Three Ks. Three walks. Still kind of all over, but you know, I'm, I'm still, uh, I'm still optimistic there. There's something there. Uh, Yimmy did his job. A couple walks though. Made it interesting. Swanson comes and cleans it up and Romano gets his, uh, 10th save of the year. Two Ks in it too. Yep. That's the side you want to see over Romano where he's striking guys out. Yes. Uh, whenever it seems like the ball gets in play with him on the mound, it, it starts to get into trouble quick. It carries a bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, again, Boba Shett follows up with a two for four day, two ribbies. Vlad, one for two with a, uh, what's that? Double. A double, yeah. A couple of Ks, but hey. And, uh, Kevin Kiermaier, three for four night, two runs at the bottom of the order. Really like what I've seen from him. I was bugging Jake in the group chat today. Kevin Kiermaier hitting better than, uh, Aaron Judge Aaron so far Judge this year. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then Sunday. So let's talk about that Vlad play. I was watching that. And at first I was pissed. Me too. Oh, yeah, me too. You're down a run. <laughs> Hit it on this like I thought it was gone off the bat. I, I get it, but you gotta be you gotta be locked in and getting the two two there. As soon as that happened, I'm like, we're gonna lose this game. That's we're not gonna capitalize on this game. Series, yeah. <laughs> so I was I was I was that guy that was just like, are you fucking kidding me? Uh, Danny Danny Dimes man, clutch clutch at bat. Yeah. Uh, brings them in with bases loaded. Jays win that game on a walk off from Danny Jansen. Kevin Pilar returned home, got his fourth home run of the year. Uh, George uh, George Springer took one out of the park. Brandon Belt continued what's been a productive week after we kind of took the... It wasn't, wasn't a pretty three-hit performance, but... Yeah, it, it isn't pretty, but he's starting to hit the ball, man. He's uh, We were giving him shit, and last week we were talking about how he's not getting on base, not doing anything. After the week he went on here, yeah. got a couple out of the park, his slash line all of a sudden looks like a respectable... 244, 330 on base, 407 slug. So he's over 700 OPS finally, yep. which is a bar, bare minimum. But starting to get some production there. The power's not there yet, but yeah, it, the power is. I don't know if it's going to be there, but you saw him take a couple. Yeah, that's fair. And then we saw Nathan Luke, who you forget's on the roster, pinch run for him and get yep. in, uh, in that awesome. inning. <laughs> yeah, you don't want Baron Belt on the base pass. <laughs> uh, good to see Springer, the yeah. two-run home run. And a, an absolutely perfect performance out of the bullpen. And that's what's interesting about the Toronto bullpen. Because when they are on the guys, like, the arms are there. Yeah. That is, Anthony Bass finally has a clean inning. Finally makes it through a clean inning. Uh, Kikuchi, let's talk about his start first, actually. Bit of a mixed bag. Mixed bag, for sure, yeah. Got the seven Ks. Allowed five runs. A lot of hits, nine. Nine hits, a couple home runs in there. So it was, it was kind of the prototypical Tucci start. Four, four innings. And asked the, the bullpen to get five innings. So to win a game where your bullpen gets you five innings of shutout ball, Happy. that's big. Yeah, that's yeah. big. Especially against a lot of teams like that. And we're talking about none of your premium arms in the pen. Yep. You got through with Anthony Bass, one clean inning for a K. Uh, Jackson, who just came up for pop there. Yeah, he looks, he looks good. Yeah, yeah he looks good. it's an interesting arm. I don't know much about him coming in, but it's an interesting arm. Didn't strike anyone out. Walked the guy, but still got out of clean inning. Yep. Trevor Richards rebounds after the uh, home run earlier in the week. Two innings, three Ks, one walk, one hit, but no runs. You want to see that? Definitely. And for him to get through two innings. That's nice. Yeah. That's nice. And my boy Nate closes it out with for the W. Nate Pearson mm-hmm. takes the ninth, gets a K, gets a walk. Gets the Again, you want to see, he let a guy on base and he's still composed up there. He's becoming, you, you can't send him down when uh, Simber gets back. No, not at this point. Simber's pitching in the upper minors now. He's back any time now. You can't send Nate Pearson back. No. It's got to be that Jackson, right? Yeah, you would think so, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, we saw two three-game sweeps. We saw a two-game loss to the Phillies. Which easily could have been a split. Yeah, six and two. So. Happy with that uh, ten game stretch or eight game stretch? I think so. Again, it would have been nice to get seven to one, but six and two, it's tough to really argue. Especially Phillies are a better team than they are, I think personally, and the Braves are a powerhouse, so they're, they're missing a couple pitchers. But again, it's yeah, a good game. That, you could tell they were missing some arms. But yeah, Kuna, man, what a player! 
What a player. Uh, yeah, a I, tool player, too. Like just I, I, sp- I spent a lot of money on him in one of my fantasy leagues. Yeah. Well worth it. Well worth it. He's gonna. He might get 70 saves this year. Or steals. steals. Yeah, I know I saw that, yeah. He guy is an animal. Yeah. You can make the case. Non-trout, no tanny uh, category, he's the guy. Well, it's, I mean, like, like a five-tool guy. Like, you, don't, you don't really get those guys. And, and, they're, and he's a high five-tool guy, yeah. too. You know what I mean? Like, he could belt 30 homers. <laughs> like, it's crazy. Uh, yeah, it is always nice, you know, despite the wins and losses. It was a fortunate three-game sweep, as we were saying. It's nice to see talent like that, too, just in the ballpark. Oh, like, definitely. watching yeah. watching guys that level, uh, especially when you get the win. We got... F- where, are we, where are we at with the team right now? Third in the AL East. Where are we at here? 24 and 16, I believe it is. 16, yeah. Eight games over 500. How are we feeling about where the Toronto Blue Jays are? Well, I believe I read something that said that I think all, all four teams in the AL East, even maybe five, that they would be a first place team anywhere else in the, in the division. It's, it's insane. So it's crazy. They're eight games above 500, and they're six games back of the Rays, who are currently 31 and 11, 19 at three at Tropic, drop at the Trop. Yeah, Nuts. Uh, Baltimore not slowing down, 26 and 14, uh, two games up to Toronto. You don't get that uh, that sweep or that three or that uh, three one win against Baltimore anymore. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. one of those things, right? You don't get those extra wins, so it's nice. Like that's a, it's, it's good to see the division competitive, but. I think uh, I was I checked out ESPN's like uh, power rankings. The AL East had I think three teams in the top five. Really? There you go. I think it was something like that with Texas like right behind there too. Who's who's yeah. really turned their season around actually? Yeah, they have actually, yeah. That's been a really good baseball team on Texas this year. Without Degrom too. <laughs> Without the, yeah yeah. Um yeah so where are we at with the Jays? Twenty four and sixteen, third in the division, eight games over five hundred. They've played 25 of those games on the road, only 15 at home. 12 and 3 at home so far this year. Uh, 12 and 13 on, on the road. Where are we at? I think we're happy. We're definitely happy. Probably not satisfied. A couple, probably a couple losses that we kind of gave away, but nothing really, nothing really can be mad at anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. The pitching's been kind of up and down, bullpen and starting situations, so. But again, like when everyone's on, they're on. So, and again, it's a nice stretch we've been on. And hopefully we can keep it up uh, in the Yankee series. Is it possible to catch Tampa Bay? Or is it going to be a race for second all year? Definitely seems tough. We're going to really need uh, Tampa Bay to be like consistently losing series to have a chance at it. Tampa Bay could go 500 and be a 95 win team, 96 win team this year. There you go. That's crazy. Um,. Put you into that wild card, which Jesus man, yep. uh, I do think that's got to be the goal, and I do think they'll close that gap. I'm convinced they're going to be a top two team in this division with Tampa Bay. Mm-hmm. I think the Yankees wake up, but you know, older team banged up, Rodon too. That's a big blow. Uh, you know, that's the guy I was scared of with the Yankees come playoff to him to say his back's chronicle now, and it's going to be a forever problem. Jesus. No. Uh, they're not even sure if he's going to pitch again this year. Uh, that Yankees team looks so beatable and oh, yeah. kind of exposed already, and it's only May. Uh, Baltimore is going to be interesting. I wonder if that team finally buys if they get close to the deadline. Because that core group seems to be doing it for them. Not a pretty style of baseball all the time, but uh, a competitive group. I, and I'm just still not sold on the Red Sox, even after watching them beat up the Jays. Yeah. So, like, uh, they're definitely beatable. <laughs> uh, looking around the AL, it looks like it would be a race between kind of the Angels, Astros, Jays, Orioles, Yankees, maybe Cleveland if they turn their season around a little bit, for the wild card spots. Do you think the Jays will comfortably secure one of those with those teams in mind? Even even the Twins look pretty good this year. Their starting pitches is pitching is ridiculous. Just year. lost Maley for the year, though, too. Tommy, he was looking good. He was yeah. looking like the guy they bet on. Yeah, well, he picked him up last year, right? Yeah. yeah, he had a rough end of the year, but he looked a lot better to start of the year. Yeah, definitely. That's true. I don't know. I, I would definitely bet the Jays, man. Uh, to, to get that, to get 
that second seed locked up. Uh, it definitely is definitely achievable. I think I, I do think Baltimore falls off a little bit. And again, the Yankees, I do feel like they are going to come, but is it going to be too late? Like I don't know. The judges miss a, a handful of or yeah. more than a handful of games already. Stands miss time. I know they're getting some guys back, but it's... yeah, judges back for the series, eh? <laughs> Let's talk about the series. Let's get right into it. Four games against the Yankees in Toronto. I'll pull up the matchups here. I know they got Manoa down the hill tonight. Yeah, uh, do we see good Manoa because it's the Yankees? It's, it's, more ne- it's Manoa versus Cordero tonight. Who do you got? I got the Jays for Manoa for sure, yeah. He's going to pull it out? I think he bounces back, yeah. I am so terrified with what's going on with him. It's It's getting hard. It's getting really hard. Yeah. I'm going to go Yankees against Manoa tonight. Terrible. It feels terrible to say I'm sick. Uh, I, I like the momentum we have right now. Big yeah. win. That's Walk true. Off win. Like, I don't know. I just feel at home, too. And your best relievers are rested up if he does struggle. That's fair. You know what? I'll, I'll switch that. Let's go. Jays Monday. Gosman. Gosman versus Jermaine. Jermaine. Two filthy guys, man. Jermaine's got some stuff. Yeah, he's been good at least. Yeah, he's a nice, nice arm. I just can't bet against Gosman right yeah, now. Yeah. He he's gonna get what well, he's got shelled what twice this year, yep. out of the starts. Uh, his stuff is just filthy. And the other starts he's been on, he's been like locked in, like not even like not even room for error. So yeah, I feel good about that one. Then a pretty interesting start: Garrett Cole versus uh, Chris Bassett. That is interesting, especially Bassett coming off that nine pitch or nine inning performance. And Cole's been really good this year. I think he just got uh, got rocked for a couple last start, but. Yeah, five and zero, oh, two point two two on the year. I'll probably give it to the Yankees in Game Three. I'm gonna give it to the Yankees too. Uh, as much as I troll them, I like Cole a lot more yeah, in that matchup. Really uh, Garrett, uh, Bassett's been good. That just seems like the type of team that might tee up on Bassett a little bit too, uh, especially with Judge back. A lot of pitches through four innings. Like yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a that's a matchup I wonder about. And then it'll be uh, Barrios and who follows Cole in the rotation. The score hasn't updated that yet. I'm going to go 3-1 either way. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm feeling, feeling pretty good with Barrios right now. Yeah, Jake, our buddy who's a Yankees guy, was saying 3-1 the Yankees this week with Judge back, but then I reminded him Kevin Kiermaier's in better than Aaron Judge this year, and uh, the Jays are going to win 3 out of three out of 4. Garrett Cole will take his start. Uh, even though the Jays do you know, handle Garrett Cole pretty well. And then they got Baltimore coming to town for three. Who do you got there? We got Kikuchi's probably going to pitch game one. He would, yeah. Kikuchi, Manoa, and then Gosman. Yeah, I'll give uh, I'll give Baltimore one. I'll give Baltimore one. I'll take the Jays two one. Yeah, I'm going to be the bad guy here. I'm going to take uh, Baltimore for the first two Gosman on Sunday. Uh, the Kikuchi train is just not something I trust compared to the other guys right now. Well, him and Manoa, I just have no trust in both of them right now. Uh, Kikuchi does have the stuff, and it's believable, but I just feel like Baltimore is the kind of team, you know, they're productive when they're in the ball more, and he gives up a... Uh, I just think they'll handle him well. Uh, I feel like he hasn't had back-to-back bad starts, though. Or, yeah, that's not, fair. Not so much bad starts, but, like, inconsistent starts, so I feel like he bounces back. Yeah, that's fair. And I think... Game two is, might be depends who's pitching on Baltimore side. I'm not too sure, but Manoa might be really good or really bad, right? So I don't know. I'll give Baltimore that one just, just kind of break it up. And again, Gosman's been so good, so I'll, I'll, I'll say two one Jays. Okay, I'm gonna be the bad guy. One and two Jays. Gosman gets his W against his former team. Watch for that to be some record breaking night. Actually, watch what he's gonna do to Baltimore, the team that drafted him. Yeah. It's true. Um. And then, yeah, I just don't trust Manoa to put two good starts together. So if I'm taking him tonight, yeah, that's fair. Uh, I'm really concerned about him, man. I don't know, I, I, I it's tough to watch. I think there's, there's going to be a point in time where he's going to turn that corner. Again, I, I hope it's this week, obviously. but I, I, f- I feel like we're getting to a point where you got to, like, option him down to the training facility and, like, take some time oh. to really build him back up. Like, he just feels lost, you know what I mean? And I don't know if he's going to handle the negative – negative side of it too well, knowing, like, how proud he is and stuff. Definitely. Like, even uh, his last start there that didn't go great, t- kind of talking about, just, like, it didn't feel like he understood what the problem was, right? Like, it just was like, oh, I'm almost there. I got to get my stuff just a little bit better. Meanwhile, he's getting teed up on, you know what I mean? Taking his word for it, 
Yeah. So I'm, I'm curious. We'll see. Uh, obviously, he's a guy I, I would love to bet on, but I am worried that you kind of got to rebuild him a little bit. Um, question here. Okay, so we're we're 50, 40 games in, a quarter of the way, 25% of the way in, on pace for what it would be, 90, 94 wins, something like that, 93 wins. Jays are in the playoff race. They're going to be in the playoff race all year. Probably going to be buyers at the deadline. What would you prioritize right now going into the deadline? Be missing a bat. Yeah. A bat for sure. I think so too. A bat. Again, a six starter to like a mid a mid guy that goes zero three for us would be ideal too. That's the thing. They really don't have like a, a a starter to even throw in right now until Mitch White's back. Because like like Stripling was that guy last year. Again, he flourished in that sort of role. But they don't have that guy that could go five or even like a, a, a three for us, right? So, Give a guy a night off kind of thing. Yeah, so it's one of those things where, again, that would be nice to get someone longer like that. Kind of like a, kind of like, I don't know, kind of like a Jeff, Jesse Chavez back in the day situation, I guess. How about him and A are still together crazy, in Atlanta? Crazy. I swear A always goes and gets that guy wherever he is. I'm surprised. Uh, I was surprised I didn't even see him the other day. I can't believe he's still playing, pitching. So, and yeah, he's got to be what on like his 17th team. And he's still throwing him. He's still throwing him. Here, if I if I have this correctly, the first uh, Chavez trade was Liam Hendricks, wasn't it? Yeah, in, in uh, Oakland, right? Yeah, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, and uh, he's coming back next week. Yep. The White Sox are clearly terrible. Yeah, he was my favorite target in the off season. I would definitely yes. Bring him home. Yes. Bring home Liam. I would guess. Could you imagine him backing up Swanson, uh, Hendricks, and Romano? I'm gonna be honest. I think I would have him as the closer, and use Romano as that fire hose guy, like the Andrew Miller type of thing. Where, hey, the top of the order is coming up in the sixth. Let's fucking go get him right here, kind of thing. And they did that last week, and it ended up working out where uh, Romano shut it down in the eighth, and then Pearson closed it out. But the Jays' offense put up a few runs. If you could start using Romano in different spots, like that, like think of where the baseball is gonna be in the playoffs, right? You see, closers aren't closers anymore. Yeah. You're putting out the fires. If you start putting Romano in those spots, you're using that as a multi-inning reliever because you know you have Liam Hendricks back there. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And Swanson. Yeah. You know, you, Swanson can go two innings. That back end looks pretty fucking tough. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. I, d- I definitely think they, they need a bat, though. Need I think a, that's a priority. They need a a left-handed bat, yeah. ideally. All right, go get the best bat available, to be honest. But if that bat could be left-handed, it would probably be a better fit. Yeah. Definitely. So... Interesting. Anything else you want to kind of talk about this week? No, I, I think that uh, that Baltimore series is going to be interesting just to kind of see, like, yeah, how, like how they compare to them because again, this whole week they've been winning games, but have they been getting lucky? Like, I don't know. Again, they're starting like, when they're starting pitches on. They've been really good this year too. So it's just going to be interesting against. Uh, I guess they're starting pitch against our bats. That's kind of my question right now. So yeah. Yeah, this, this seems like a good measuring stick week and a half because you got Tampa for four right after for the AL East. Um, you got the 11 games in a row against the AL East here against the top four in it, if you include yourself. Yep. What would you be hoping for record-wise? We won't get into our predictions for Tampa series, but what would you just kind of be hoping for in 11 games against the AL East here? 7-4? I was going to say 7-4 sounds Pretty, pretty good to me again. If, you're happy at six and five, but seven and four would be the goal. Yeah, again, if you're, you definitely don't want to be. You want to be above five hundred for sure. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, you're happy with six and five, but I think the goal should be here to be go seven and four. You want you don't want to be losing games in the division, obviously, right? So if you're able to stay above five hundred, it's golden. And uh, ideally, if some of those games came against Tampa, like a three one series against Tampa, would be kind of nice, knowing you're chasing them down. A worse a split. Well, yeah, well, you gotta stay close until October. We know that's when it's gonna be decided with all those games against Tampa and New York. Yes, it's gonna yeah. be a gauntlet down this. You're gonna be playing b- b- playoff baseball like sub- the second week of September on. One sixty-two. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, really looking forward to where this unfolds. Glad to have you down in the studio today, and uh, thank you guys for listening. We we'll look forward to seeing where this Jays series goes and seeing what we do as a podcast as this kind of grows here. So, thank you.